what we have to do next so we have already seen measures of central tendency now what we have to understand is called measures of dispersion measures of dispersion so what are measures of dispersion think of two stocks stock number a which is kind of a very safe very safe stock okay so think of this as some fmcg industry hindustan unilever those kind of generally moves in a very stable fashion so every year let's say it has given you a return of 10% for last 5 years as against this let's look at something which is more volatile so let's think of some realty stock okay so in india dlf let's say in year 1 this stock gave you a return of 30% but in some year it gave you a return of minus 10% then it gave you a return of 40% some year minus 20% and then in one year it gave you a return of 10 Let's calculate a simple arithmetic mean of all the four, all the five returns. How much in the first case? Arithmetic mean is simply ten percent. How much would be arithmetic mean here? It should be ten again. So arithmetic mean in both the cases is ten. So if you take mean, it's telling you that both the stocks are doing good. but then which one is more risky the b and how do you measure that riskiness in finance by using measures of dispersion that how dispersed is the data how widely divided is my data from my mean so the first measure of dispersion is called range and what range simply means the difference between smallest and largest value so in the A case my range is zero, but in case B, how much is my range? Smallest number is how much? Minus twenty is the smallest number here. And what is the largest number? Forty. So what is the range? Sixty. Range is the difference between smallest and largest number. ठीक है? Was that a eureka moment? <coughs> Was that a eureka moment minus one? <laughs> okay. Once we have range, second measure of dispersion is called MAT. Okay, full form of MAT is mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation. Okay, so how do you calculate mean absolute deviation? Someone please remember the numbers. Thirty, forty, ten, minus twenty, minus ten. Thirty, forty, ten, minus twenty, minus ten. These are the values. So let's call these values as x. Let's calculate total of them. Seventy, eighty. This would be sixty, fifty. That means total is fifty. Therefore, mean, which is also denoted by x bar. So mean is how much? Ten. Here we would calculate x minus x bar, but absolute values. X minus x bar, absolute values. So thirty minus ten, twenty. Forty minus ten, thirty. Ten minus ten, zero. Twenty minus twenty minus ten, thirty. Minus ten minus ten. 20 but we take only the absolute values and then we would take a total of them so 50 and 50 100 and this 100 we would divide with 5 so summation of x minus x bar divided by n so 100 divided by 5 we get 20 this 20 is called mad mean absolute deviation what this is giving you is that on an average the numbers are about 20 plus and minus on an average not always okay on an average the numbers are 20 plus and minus from the mean that means on an average 
the range of data set is 10 to 30 or 10 to minus 10. Are you appreciating the point here? Should I repeat this again? Mean absolute deviation. That means from your mean, the center point of your data which is 10, on an average data set is 20 point on the right or 20 point on the left. So if your mean is 10, on an average the data set is in the range of positive 30 or negative 10. But this is on an average because we see that there is actually a number which is 40. So what we have done is on an average the data set should be in this range. Is this clear? Okay. But of course the most popular measure of dispersion is not range, it's not MAT because this MAT has got certain problems, we'll see that later on. The most popular measure of dispersion is called standard deviation. So how do you calculate standard deviation? Let's say my x values are 6, 4, 15, 20, 25. Let's calculate a x bar. First find out a total 10, 25, 50, 70. How much would be x bar? 17 divided by 5, 14. Round figure karta hai isko. Let me add it by another 30. So let's make this as 36. So 40, 55, 60, 100. So total is 100. And x bar is how much? 20. Once you have x, calculate x minus x bar. Once you have x, calculate x minus x bar. Now here we do not take absolute the way we did earlier. Here we would take the values as it is. So 36 minus 20, this would be 16. 4 minus 20, minus 16. 15 minus 20, minus 5. 20 minus 20, 0. 25 minus 20, positive 5. Once you have x minus x bar, then square this number. So x minus x bar squared. Okay. So 16 into 16, how much? 16 into minus 16 256 minus 5 into minus 5 25 0 25 let's take a total of this which would be called as summation of x minus x bar squared so this is 500 512 so summation of x minus x bar square is 562 how do you calculate variance? A variance is summation of x minus x bar square divided by n. And how do you calculate standard deviation? Summation of x minus x bar square divided by n under root. Which means if you take variance, if you take root of that variance, what you get is standard deviation. Correct? So, 562 divided by 5 is my variance and 562 divided by 5 under root is my standard deviation. So, tell me how much is the value of standard deviation? 562 divided by Five sixty two divided by five equal to under root. I've done it wrong. Five sixty two divided by five equal to under root ten point six zero. So standard deviation of the data set is ten point six. So what did we do? First we calculated the deviation from the mean, which is x minus x bar. Then we squared those deviations. Then we took a total of those deviations divided by n and then take under root that gives us standard deviation clear how do you interpret now the standard deviation is more powerful than mean absolute deviation so the interpretation of this is that on an average the data set on an average the data set is about in the range of mean plus that standard deviation which is of 10 
So if your mean of this data set was how much? 20. So on, a, on an average, the data values are 20 plus 10, which is 30 on the right hand side and 20 minus 10, 10 on the left hand side. So on an average, 10 to 30. Okay, and later on, we will study certain distributions, different behavior of data, different types of data. So if you'd use a data assumption like normal distribution, it will say that about 64% of the data is here. But if you use some other type of data set, then it will start giving you probabilities of those datas. If you haven't understood, don't worry. Have you understood how to calculate standard deviation? Yes. Now, <coughs> let me finish, then you'll probably understand better. There is something called population in statistics and something called as sample. Okay, what is a population? Population means that you're dealing with the whole available set of data. For example, if I want to know on an average how many hours CFA candidate in India study. So if I go and find out each and every CFA candidate of level 1, 2 and 3, take data of each one of them and take a total, that's population. But of course, it's a difficult exercise. So if I assume that the candidates in Pune are a good sample of candidates in India. And if I take total of all the CFA candidate average studies in Pune, then it's a sample. Now what happens is, imagine that this is a big population, okay, out of which you have taken a small sample. When you take a sample, you try to take the most representative sample of the population, correct? So one of the value that you've taken in the sample might be the mean of population itself. Possibility, there's a chance that one of the value that you've taken from the sample is the mean itself. Now, when I calculate standard deviation, what do I do? I say X minus X bar. When I'm dealing with sample, one of the X is going to be the X bar itself. So which means there is a possibility that one value in my numerator would be zero. To offset that, when we calculate the standard deviation of sample in denominator, instead of N, we replace that with N minus one. Have you followed the logic? So I'm writing the formula for you. If you want to know the population standard deviation, and sample standard deviation. There are two separate formulas. What are the formulas? Summation of x minus x bar square divided by n under root. But when you're doing with sample, summation of x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 under root. Is this clear? Do you want me to repeat again why we are taking n minus 1? Hmm? Yes, no. <coughs> there are two reasons for this. The correct reason is in statistics there is a concept of degree of freedom, DOF. So, meaning of degree of freedom is that how many points or how many data are truly random. Jaysay, aapne population liya 10 logo ka. Thik hai? Are those points really random? Matlab, are they like really unpredictable? When you do, when you start with a sample, so let's say you want to take a sample, you have to first take a point and then take data arounding it. So that point that you've taken at the inception, that cannot be random anymore because uske aas paas ka data le rahe so therefore my degree of freedom is always n minus 1. This is a true statistical reason. Okay, but let's say we don't want to go to that level today. Just try to build an understanding. Say this is my whole population. I have taken a representative sample. When I took certain values in this sample, one value actually turned out to be x bar itself. Because of which in my numerator, this x minus x bar became 0 for one value. To offset that, in denominator, I will take n minus 1. Clear? And if still you feel that you haven't understood, remember that in sample, when we calculate standard deviation, denominator is n minus 1. In population, it is n. Clear? So we calculate karo. 
x values 10 15 20 25 40 calculate population and sample standard deviation Have you got the answer? Hmm? Yes, in case if you haven't, let's do it together. Total of this data set is 110. 110 divided by 5 means 22 x minus x bar, <coughs> 10 minus 22 minus 12, 15 minus 22 minus 7, 20 minus 22 minus 2, 25 minus 22, 3, 40 minus 22, 18. Take a square, square of them, 144, 49, 4, 9, 324. Take total of them, which is 530. Once you have 530 for population, the answer is 530 divided by 5 under root. And for sample, the answer is 530 divided by 4 under root. So can I say that sample standard deviation will always be higher than population standard deviation? Can I make that statement? Yes, it will be because the denominator would always be n minus 1. So sample standard deviation will always be higher than population standard deviation. Yes, back then, Naneshwar, are you clear? Hmm? Kai pattern kai hop? Konsa wala? Population or sample? 530 divided by 5 under root. Summation of x minus x bar 530 aya divided by 5 under root. Karo? 530 divided by 5 equal to under root button. 